And then welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question. Luke is a foodie. Now this is a question based on greedy, but specifically it involves the concept of uh, segments or intervals. Now this is an interesting topic if you're not familiar with it, or if you have solved that standard lead code question, merge intervals. This is somewhat related to it, but of course by reading at the surface, it doesn't look like this question is that. So that's my job, right? Uh, I'll show you how we can uh, reach that approach of merge intervals here. It's not exactly merge intervals, but similar to that. If you don't know about that question, uh, forget what I just said. So I'll quickly, I'll quickly summarize the question for you. This guy wants to eat n piles of food aligned in a straight line in front of him. The i th pile contains a i units of food. Okay. So what he'll do is he'll walk from first pile towards the nth pile and slowly uh, start eating every pile of food. But there is one condition. Uh, he can only eat a pile if and only if uh, this value, that is absolute value of this v minus a i, is less than equals to x. Okay. Let's break it down. So a i is simply uh, how many units of food is present in this pile. So if you if this guy wants to eat this pile. Absolute value of v minus ei should be less than equals to x. This x is a fixed integer uh, and it's I guess a uh, positive, right? So positive integer and v is Luke's food affinity. Now this food affinity is what this guy has control over. He can change the food affinity to any integer before he eats the ith pile. So before eating it, uh, he can change v in a way that uh, this inequality is followed. What we want to find is find the minimum number of changes needed to eat every pile of food. Note that initial choice for v is not considered as a change. So the question is pretty simple. You are given n. So n means how many piles of food you have. So, and for each pile, how many units of food is there? So EI specifies how many units of food is in this pile. You are given this fixed integer x, which is greater than not equals to zero. I guess it's greater than equals to one. So yeah, I should write here greater than equals to one. It's a positive integer. And Luke can eat a pile if and only if v minus EI. So v is uh, his food affinity, which he has control and he can uh, change according to his will, right? So yeah, he can change his food affinity to any integer before he eats the ith pile. In order that this inequality gets followed. Okay, fine. Now, what we want to do is first uh, choose the value of v. Okay, so that as they have told, initial choice for v is not considered as a change. So choose the value of v and then find the minimum number of changes needed to eat the entire pile, right? So the pile uh, has many food items, right? Even till a n. Now, first choose the value of v. This will not contribute to a change. Okay, and then uh, start eating each and every pile. Now, you can only eat a pile if this inequality is followed. If this inequality is not followed, you can make a change, right? So you can make a change, but make sure that the changes are as minimum as possible, right? And we want to find the minimum number of cha changes such that he can eat all the number of piles. And I guess it's not very difficult to see. He will always be able to eat the piles, uh, all the food piles, because he can change his food affinity according to his will. So I guess the question is clear. Uh, let's move on to the approach. First things first, uh, looking at the constraint, it seems as if uh, n log n is a maximum that you can go. I don't suggest you to always uh, first figure out the maximum constraint and uh, approach, but it's a good uh, starting point that you know how far you can go, right? So it shows that uh, n log n is the farthest you can go. So don't think about order of n square solutions here, fine? So yeah, uh, let's try to make some observations here. Now, first observation is, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you cannot change the order, right? You cannot change the order of piles because he wants to eat the piles from first till end. So can't change the order of piles. So that's one observation. And because usually you might think like can sorting help or not, but here in this case he wants to eat piles from first till end, so changing order is not allowed. He wants to eat sequentially. Okay, fine. What else observation? He can only eat a pile if this thing is followed. This inequality v minus a i is less than equals to x. Now a i is fixed, right? For the one to n value, a one to n values are fixed. X is fixed, but something that is not fixed is v, right? So how do you choose this v? So what I thought is uh, okay, uh, I I. First, tried thinking about how can I choose a value for v uh, for different values like from a1 to a n, but things were not clicking. Then I, what I thought is uh, this inequality is here, and uh, I remember that whenever you have a modulus, uh, you try to break it. Like modulus is very hard to interpret like this. So just break this inequality and see if things are making much more sense to me, right? So just to simplify the inequality, what I did is um, you all remember, right? In your plus two, you have studied this. If mod y is uh, less than equals to x. Uh, then it implies that uh, y is greater than equals to minus x and less than equals to x. So this is a, like basic uh, linear inequalities. I guess I studied in my eighth or ninth. Fine. So not even plus two. So this inequality I knew. So I just try to simplify this inequality here. So I can write here like this, right? V minus a i greater than equals to minus x less than equals to x. I'm just trying to simplify the inequality here. Then what I'll do is I'll add a uh, i on both side. So v greater than equals to v uh, a i minus x less than equals to plus x. I did nothing. I just applied the laws of inequality and this is what you can come up with. 
fine so this looks pretty good uh, like because this modulus creates a lot of mental uh, stress uh, burden so i this looks better so now what you can uh, see is uh, uh, for given values let's just say i have uh, a1 a2 a3 so on uh, let us just put two more values here n minus 1 and en luke uh, can eat a uh, food if and only if uh, he can eat this a1 if and only if your v value the affinity value is in this range a1 minus x a1 plus x i'm just using this guys okay so this is an equality that i have simplified so instead of this i'll use this because this looks so much, e much easier to interpret now he can eat a2 only if uh, the v value is in this range right a2 minus x a2 plus x right this he can eat a3 if and only if the v is in range a3 minus x and uh, a3 plus x right similarly for this uh, he can only eat this if it is a n minus x and a n plus x cool so right so i was not able to think the exact value but now i know uh, what should be the v value so v's value should fall in this uh, ranges for respective food uh, pile okay perform minimum number of changes right and the first value of v that you set uh, does not cost any change right so that is not counted as a change so ideally what you would want is you want to choose a v value which is present in the intersection of all these segments right because the initial value of v that you set does not count to change so ideally uh, if there is a value which lies in intersection of all of these segments your job is done right because for this guy the v has to lie in this segment for this guy v has to lie in this segment and in the very ideal scenario for all these segments you will have an intersection so let's say you have segments like this 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 or if you are familiar with venn diagrams let's say first segment has these values on the second has these values this values and then eventually you will put it uh, like you will choose a v value which is among the intersection of all these segments right so or you can think in terms of number line as well right so if let's say first segment is here another segment is here then let's say third segment is here then you will choose this value but this is the ideal scenario because all segments may or may not intersect right if all of them intersect then very good we don't need to make any change and your life is easy okay but all the segments may not have intersection right because it can happen that some of the segments have an intersection then some more have intersection so but they are disjoint from these guys and some might be individuals right anyway uh, then we have to make changes to the values of v but one thing that you should notice here is we were given given inequalities to deal with but now we have converted our problem based on segments right so now your problem revolves around a uh, uh, v value should fall here to eat this food pile right to eat the second food pile the v value should fall here to eat third food pile the v value should fall here so it comes with experience that uh, problems based on segments or intervals uh, are much easier to deal with uh, don't worry if you didn't know it uh, you know now right so here i've taken a general example and uh, let's see how we can approach this problem now this will be much easier to approach now uh, okay so this is a general example i've taken eight segments here and uh, i want to make changes to the values of v as less as possible but one thing still remains right so we cannot change the order of eating right the order cannot be changed we still have to eat sequentially like first pile second pile third pile fourth pile so on right so the order cannot change that's one thing so we have to eat sequentially but we have to make changes to v as less as possible now hear me out uh, once you have the segments in front of you this strategy should come to your mind this greedy strategy should come to your mind don't uh, change like don't change or you can say don't make any changes don't make any changes until there is an intersection until there is a overlap or whatever intersection until there is a overlap or intersection among segments right what i'm trying to say here is uh, we are starting uh, with the first segment right okay i don't know what value of v to choose but i definitely know it will fall somewhere here okay i'll choose a value from that no problem but right now don't focus on what exact value of v you should be choosing but we'll think about uh, when we need to make a change okay because the exact value of uh, v if you think about it it becomes a little bit difficult so uh, when can when we definitely have to make a change that's what you should uh, think about right now so we'll choose a value of v okay uh, in this segment fine no issues when the second segment arrives uh, do i have to make a change you see here there is an intersection between these two segments right so there is an intersection between these two segments so i need not make a change because i would have chosen a v, a v value v value in this range right and it would uh, uh, still uh, be fine and uh, this loop would be able to eat first and second food pile right without making a change now come here comes the third pile now first two segments have an overlap here in this overlap the third segment also has an overlap right so there is no need to make a change right but uh, here comes the fourth pile the fourth pile uh, like this was the intersection of these three segments this fourth pile does not have an intersection 
So at this point, you will have to make a change. You're getting what I'm trying to say. Don't change the value until there is an overlap among the segments. Because until there is an overlap, so you're eating sequentially, right? But until there is an overlap among the segments, uh, the same value of V can persist. So there's no need to change, right? Until there's an overlap, we can always choose a V value from that overlap and uh, no changes are required, right? For example, what I'm trying to say here is, guys, see, if there was one more segment, it's a fourth segment would have fall, uh, fourth segment would have fallen somewhere here. So this is the intersection of all the four segments, right? So until there is an overlap among the segments in a group, right? So this is the group, right? He was trying to eat this uh, four sequentially. Until there is an intersection among these segments, you don't change the value of V. Makes sense, right? Uh, pretty simple. So let's just do a dry run here. So you'll understand it way better. And I'll also explain it in detail in the cold walk. Don't worry about it. Fine. So I'll initially start with this first segment. Okay, fine. Then I'll go to second segment. Is there an intersection between these two or overlap? Yes, there is an overlap. This is the overlap. Fine. I'll come to third segment. Now, very important. Is there an overlap between this third segment and the overlapped part, the intersecting part of one and two? That is, in other words, I'm trying to say, is there an overlap between segment one, two, and three? Right? Because if there is an overlap between segment one, two, and three, the same value of V can persist. Yes, indeed, there is an overlap between the segments one, two, and three. So yeah, same value of V can be chosen. Right? So in other words, the initial value of V will be same for all these three segments. Like a one value of V can uh, work out for all these three segments if I choose between this interval, like in this uh, yellow portion. Fine. Here comes uh, the fourth guy. Now this fourth guy, does this fourth guy have an intersection with this part? It doesn't. So the V values will have to change. We have to make a change here. So if I keep track of changes here, let's just see equals to zero. At this point, you will have to make a change. For simple reason, you cannot uh, find an overlap between this fourth segment and the intersection of these three segments. In other words, in other words, these four segments don't have a common intersection. These three had an intersection. So you could pick a same V value for all three of them. But for this fourth guy, you will have to make a change. So that's what you're going to do. Let's just make a change. One value changes. So now I'll pick a V value somewhere here. Doesn't really matter right now. Then I come to fifth segment. Now check, is there an intersection between fourth and fifth segment? Yes, there is an intersection. So the same value of V can work for these two segments. Why? You could choose a value here. And the same value V will work. Now here comes the sixth segment. Is there an intersection between the sixth segment and this yellow portion? No. So you cannot have a same value for segments four, five, and six. So you will definitely have to make a change. Right, so I'll denote it by colors. So you will have to make a change and you will have to pick a different value. So second change will come here. Fine. Now you will pick a V value, but it doesn't really matter which one, but you can, uh, you will have to change the value here. That is for sure. You don't know which value, but you will have to make a change here because there is no intersection between these three segments. So a different value of V has to come. Now here comes the seventh segment. When the seventh segment has arrived, is there an intersection between uh, six and seven? Yes, there is. Uh, there is an intersection between six and seven segment. So a same value of V can persist for these two segments, right? So no changes required here. Now here comes the eighth segment. Now, is there an intersection between eighth segment and this green portion? No, there is no intersection. So V value has to change. V value has to change. The V value will change, right? So that's the question. Uh, you persist the same value of V until there is an intersection among the segments. Important thing is you go by order, yeah, right? You, you, you try to eat the first pile, the second pile, the third pile. Until there is a common intersection between the segments, you keep the value of V same. But once you cannot find an intersection, uh, you will have to make a change. If it's still a little bit muddly to you, don't worry. I'll explain uh, the implementation uh, in more detail this time. But uh, let's just first see how can one go about finding an intersection of two segments, right? So if you have uh, segments like this, like this, like uh, let's say this is L1 R1, this is L2 R2. How do you find intersection of this segment? Uh, if you observe, uh, like intersection of this segment is this part, right? If you have uh, something like this, L1, R1, L2, R2. So you will have an intersection like this. Let's take one more example. I guess you'll get it. If you have something like this, um, let's just say something like this. Okay, this was L1, this was R1, this was L2, this was R2. So here, this, and here it will be this. Uh, I think you can observe one thing here that uh, if I call the intersection part to be like this first coordinate, second coordinate, the first one will be max of l1 l2 right and the second one will be minimum of r1 and r2 okay of course if there is a valid intersection existing then this is how you will uh, find the intersection among these segments but if there is not a valid uh, intersection exists for example if you have this right l1 r1 l2 r2 and you still apply the formula you will come up with a you will still come up with an answer so maximum l1 uh, l2 so you will like here there will be l2 and uh, 
minimum of R1 R2, there will be R1. Right, but this segment won't be valid. This intersection part won't be valid. Uh, and that check is not very difficult. Uh, if uh, L is uh, greater than R, then uh, this segment is not valid, right? So this overlap, this overlap is not valid. If there is a valid overlap, this L, uh, this guy will be less than equals to this guy, right? If there is no overlap, then of course it will be greater. So that's one thing. Uh, the approach, uh, I guess it's clear, right? You will try to, uh, you will not make a change until there is an overlap found. But once uh, an overlap can be found, you will try to make a change, right? So let's just implement it. Uh, okay, guys, so time for the code walkthrough. I have already taken the input here, n, x, and how many units of food, like area of i is how many units of food this file has. Now, first things first, we will need a variable uh, to keep track of changes. So, changes equals to 0. Now, what I am going to do is, I am always going to check if there is an overlap between the current segment and the previous segment, right? So, I will create a, a simple vector here, uh, which keeps track of uh, what was the range of previous segment, right? If there is an intersection, we will update it, no issues. So, initially, uh, so what I what will do is, uh, initially, I have to choose v for something in uh, range for the first, first segment, right? So firstly, the v should come in this range, right? Area of 0 minus x to area of 0 plus x, right? So this is the first segment. That is what I'm trying to say. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from a second segment till the last segment. And I'm going to first check if there is an overlap. Right? If there is an overlap, we don't need to change v, right? Until there is an overlap, we don't need to change v. So if there is an overlap, we will not change it, uh, else we will change it. So how will we going to do it? So to check an overlap, first of all, we will need to find out uh, what is the uh, current segment right so first let this calculate the current segment the current segment will be area of i minus x area of i plus x right nothing complicated here now we have to check whether there is an overlap or not so first let's just calculate the intersection right so intersection or overlap let's just name it very happy so overlap is what i already told you max of l1 l2 so max of uh, previous of 0 and uh, current of 0 right so previous of 0 is uh, the previous segment or uh, the intersection part of previous uh, group of segments that's what previous will hold at a time and uh, min of r on r2 so previous of one current of one right so very simple we first calculate what is the current segment and we find out the overlap overlap between what current segment and the previous segments or uh, overlap of the previous segments right so we have found an overlap now how will you check whether an overlap uh, is valid you will have to check if overlap of what overlap of zero uh, is less than equals to overlap of 1 right this overlap will be valid if and only if uh, l is less than equals to r right so if that is confusing to you you can make it like this if there's an invalid overlap if there is a if uh, there is no overlap that is l greater than r then of course you have to make a change now we need to change right so changes have to be plus plus and now previous has become current right? so now this uh, segment will be considered uh, from now onwards else uh, there is an overlap so very good now the previous will become the overlap right so First two segments overlap will be considered uh, as a, the new previous. For the next segment, whether you want to check whether there is an overlap, you'll have to check among the intersection of first two guys, right? So that was the thing we have discussed during dry run. All right, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'll have to just print um, these changes in the end. So I'll quickly uh, summarize, okay, don't worry. So first I have created a variable changes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a previous here, uh, which is right now the first segment, right? Now, I'm, I'll go through from second to the end. If there is an overlap, if there is an overlap between the current segment and the previous segment or the previous overlap of segments, it's good. I'll move ahead by just updating previous equals to overlap. But if there is not an overlap, so this is an invalid overlap, right? So I'll increment the changes and now previous will become current because now uh, the new segment that couldn't be included in the previous group of segments uh, will start our new baseline. Fine. So yeah, that's that. Let me just quickly run it. It seems to be working. Let me just quickly submit it. Yeah, it works. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.